Well, we're glad that you're here today, and we just want to, what a great word from Pastor Stephen just to keep us going, right? And I think that's important when we step into classes like this, we realize that as God continues to transform our relationships, whether they be married relationships, the way we address any relationship, it's going to be different, and the world's going to take note of that. The world will take note of that. I had a couple in my office, and they were um, they're engaged, both Christians, ready to, wanted to get married. And over the years, I have uh, had to do, you know, you go, I go through a certain protocol of things and questions and directions for them. And, and one of them, of course, is their, uh, the, the purity of their relationship, uh, not living together, uh, not uh, being intimate, not sleeping together, and so on. And when I first did this some 39 years ago, as I, as I kind of approached that area, everybody would turn red and it would be uncomfortable and everything else. But as time has gone on, I find like I actually, actually have to express it directly, you know. So I just asked them, I, I never did this before, and, but now in these recent years, I just, are you sleeping together? You know, because it's just easier to get a yes or no answer because many times people think it doesn't matter. And so as I was speaking to them and, and the beautiful Christians and said, no, pastor, you know, that's not part of our life. You know, we live here, he lives here, I, he, I live there, so on and so forth. And we went through the whole thing. And I asked them a question, which I think is a question that sort of bears asking, and that is, what is the impact of that on your friends and your unsafe family? And they're like, they don't get it. They don't get it at all. And I said, that's the best place you can be right now. When they don't get it, then you can express it to them. You can tell them. And they, you know, it's funny. The guy usually don't say it as much, but the, the, uh, the brides or the... Uh, they will say, yeah, my friends get me on the side and say, how can you do that? And I wish we did. So whatever we're learning in our relationships, when Christ is in the center of it, it impacts unsaved people who are trying to understand relationships themselves. Amen? Well, we have a number of things that go on here, and I want to get into the class, but I, I'd like uh, Joe Falcone, if he could come up. We have something that God put on my heart a while ago, and Joe and I have been working together, and it's called a men's intensive uh, he'll explain it to you, otherwise I'll explain the whole thing and then hand the microphone, you'll have nothing to say, all right? So there you go. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, so we have something special that we worked on, and this October 8th, Saturday, we are going to do a men's intensive. Now, this is going to be a small group. It's the first time we've ever done something like this, um, like 8 to 12 people. Um, it's going to be up in Wading River. It's overlooking a bluff on the Long Island Sound. Um, and it's going to be really a beautiful, beautiful time. So we're gonna, it's going to be an all-day thing running from about 8.30 to 4. We'll have breakfast and lunch. And we'll be working off of Vince Miller's program. Um, Vince Miller is a prolific writer and speaker. And we're using uh, six sessions that we're going to split up uh, with video. And, and we'll have some time to discuss. We'll have some breaks. And we'll have time for prayer. So we're really anticipating and praying that it's going to be a phenomenal time. We really urge you to consider it, the husbands. Um, we have about only six spots left. And um, I would suggest if you want to go, uh, then contact me. And uh, it's a $30 fee, and, and we'll get you locked in. But I really, I really think that you should just think about it and pray on it and take advantage of the situation. I think we're going to have a f an unbelievable time. Thanks so much, Joe. Yeah, and, and again, the key is this isn't just like, hey, another thing to do. No, you say, hey, you know what I want? What I say to the men on Monday night, I want to step up to the next place in my marriage. You know, we all get there in any part of our you know, careers. You're just like, okay, how do I get to this next part? How do I get to this next part? And this is an opportunity that we believe the Holy Spirit will work and we will have God do some awesome things during that time. So uh, if you, uh, the, I think there's a blue sheet on all the tables. That's what that's on there. Just grab hold of that and uh, you can contact Joe directly. And uh, I, I think it'll be an awesome time. I also, again, these major announcements. Here's the bagel list. We have two slots left. All right. You know, if you don't sign, there's, you get half the amount of bagels, so you have, to, you have to get here even sooner to get all the bagels, right? Well, let's see what God has for us this morning. Father, we are so aware, even as your word has been deposited into our hearts and into our lives, that we want to be transformed. We don't want to be like this world. And when the fire comes in, we want to walk out knowing that we have grasped the hand of the Lord and you've gone with us. And whether that be in our marriage, whether it be in our workplace, whether it be with our kids, whatever it is, Lord, we want to be open to you. So hear our hearts, 
And hear the word as, we, as it's declared and we receive it in your name. Amen. And again, men, next uh, Saturday, our men's breakfast, I'm going to be speaking on the topic, what are you building? Uh, these are great opportunities, please, to uh, bring. This is when you bring your uncle, your kids, your neighbor. It's a great open opportunity. Everybody wants to eat, and that's good. You know, I think Smithtown has got that down. Have food. If you serve them food, they will come. You know, that's kind of how it works. So listen, we're going through the book of James, and out of it, pulling out relational things that help us, not only in our marriages, but of course, that's a, a key factor, but also in other relationships. And if we, ha we constantly have to see this with the filter that we are different, that James is speaking to a people that, have been, that are being persecuted, people that have been, that come to, and this is the kind of the thing that, that is sort of the foundation here, and that is people have come uh, and they've converted. They now are. Uh, they now are following Jesus. They're following the Messiah. That's what's happened. And when that's happened, their whole life is completely turned upside down. Sort of when, like when a uh, a Jewish believer, he in this day and age, an Orthodox Jew becomes a Christian. They're cut from their home and from their family. Well, here it was the same thing. But they're cut from their community, and that is the whole community. Their, their jobs are removed. Their income is removed. Their family support, everything's removed. That's who James is writing to. So when he writes these words, they, they are coming into a setting that's, that's pretty intense. It's not just somebody sitting back going, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. It's like this is, this is where they're living right now. So let's look at this. We, we went uh, from uh, chapter 1, 1 through 5. Yes, uh, last week we're going to uh, actually go to 12 divided in two parts here. So if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable, in all he does. And, and I think this is, this is a key, and this is honestly, over the years that I've worked with couples and families, it's what I call the pushing through. We're in a world today where, you, where I, we are not interested in pushing through unless we know exactly that we're going to be benefiting from it. We don't want to push through. We just want to be us. We don't want to go the extra mile because unless I, I'm guaranteed that I'm getting something out of this, I'm not doing it. And yet, this is what James is speaking into our relationships. Yeah, you know, I think one of the greatest blessings of the name center in watching couples uh, be led through and taught and, and counseled by our CMS couple, our certified marriage specialist, is that you, we want to grasp whole of people that are ready to push through. And if you've ever been through anything where you have to unlearn and relearn or whatever it may be, you have to push through when, when our kids... Um, both Brad and Rebecca, uh, both Brad and Jacqueline um, were, they got piano lessons here and they had it from someone from the church and it was fine and we were like, oh, you know, we went to the recitals and it was just a wonderful time. So when Brad went off to school at uh, North Central Music, his major in, in ministry, he, um, I said to him one day, he, he was saying something and I said, how come you don't tell anybody that you play the piano? He says, dad, I don't play the piano. What do you mean? You do play the piano. I remember I have the bill for all the piano that you played. He goes, no, he says, um, the way that we were taught is not the way that I need to know to play classic piano that I need in order to write music and everything else. So he said, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know how to play. I have to, re I had to relearn how to play the piano. Of course, not playing the piano, I have no idea what that means, but I knew for him it was a huge shift. He had to unlearn to learn. And sometimes as we're walking through relationships, a lot of it is unlearning to learn. Unlearning what we've grown up with, unlearning what we've become comfortable with, even unlearning what maybe happened, worked in the early years of our marriage and now at a later years in our marriage or in a relationship that we've had in one job or another job. So when James writes this, he says, set your minds and your heart on him. In other words, with wisdom, with wisdom, if you ask, if you lack wisdom, if you if you don't know how to make this work, he says, ask God. Ask God, God, I, I don't know how, to, I can't tell you how many times in my Christian life, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. God, I don't know how to do this. I know this is what your word says. Here's the situation. I don't know how to do this. You have to help me. You have to help me. Because I don't, I can't look it up. 
We can look up and we can walk through a lot of the truths that God has for us, but now when we have to walk it out, that's a whole nother thing. And so wisdom is you, you don't receive because you don't ask. Isn't that, isn't that what James says later on? You don't, you don't, because you're not asking. You see, there's a place in our relationships, whatever it is, whether I'm at, uh, whether I'm at a, uh, you know, in my job or I'm a, in my marriage relationship, we don't ask. What we ask is the other person to change. What we ask is the situation to change. But we don't ask God and say, God, help me to be the husband. Help me to be the wife. Help me to be the employer. Help me to be the parent. Help me to do that. We don't ask. And so what happens is we don't get anything. And that's why wisdom starts when, see, when God answers us, he doesn't answer us in a pill. You don't take the pill and go, ah, got it now. We walk through it. Anybody that's been through anything, this is kind of an interesting thing, is, um, and I say this respectfully, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Brad and Rebecca, you know, as that's our, our son and daughter-in-law. Many of you know the, uh, the bout. Uh, of, with cancer that she had, liposarcoma cancer, and the miracle, literally the miracle, she has no cancer, no sign of anything anymore, that literally the tumor fell out of her when they opened her up in an impossible situation. They just have a new album coming out. I'm not pushing the album, but this, so, and it's, it's really good. So, um, but, you know, and, and the, one of the title songs is Life Again, you know, that restart. That restart, how important it is. So we're sitting with a relative, and uh, they said, uh, we, we the con- came up in the conversation, and, and uh, she said, so how long are they going to do this? You know, I mean, she's well, so they're just going to keep playing this over again, the whole the fact that she had cancer. I just looked like, what? I said, what do you mean? Well, I mean, the, she's done with the cancer, so they're just going to keep, and the actual word that was used, are they going to keep milking this? I said, oh, okay, okay, I, we got to stop this conversation right now. God did a miracle in her life. Do you think that's got a time limit on it? That, oh, it's five years? Okay, so that miracle is no longer worth talking about. When God works in our lives and the wisdom of heaven flows, and that's a miracle that happens every day. Every single marriage here that is growing, restored, wherever it is, it's a miracle. And that's why he says, you know, you do not, you, so do you want a solution that honors the Lord? Because I want to speak of the miracle, and whether it's the smallest thing, maybe a financial thing, whether it be our kids, whether it be work, whatever it is, be ready for a miracle because that's what God, the Bible says, that we overcome by the testimony of our faith, that we're able to say that all the time, all the time. And so what James is saying here is, okay, when we come into these relationship challenges, when we come into the marriage, when we come into our, our prodigal kids, when do we stop and say, okay, God, I am ready. And so when I say, Lord, give me wisdom, what if that includes forgiveness or serving or dying to self? Wisdom blends the facts with the, with the follow-through and the application, and that's really what happens. So all of a sudden, God gives us understanding of our wife or our husband of our kids, whatever it may be, gives us understanding. Maybe understanding because we're in a new setting or maybe a new place to minister into their heart and into their life, whatever it may be. And when we step into there, then God is able to do something powerful. I always want something to God to keep doing something powerful in our marriage, with our kids, whatever it may be. You know, I was at a, um, we were at a conference, Phyllis and I, I don't remember, I, I probably shared this, I talk so much, I forget. So um, we were at a conference, and it was about, uh, it was uh, the International Marriage Conference. We were there as, as uh, workshop uh, presenters and so on. And at one point, um, the, pre- the speaker said, okay, so I'm going to, I think it's important that we know how to pray together. And, we were, and of course, you all go, oh. you know, Phyllis and I pray together, men's and men's. You know, sometimes, sometimes, not. Nah, uh. So we're standing there, and he goes, and, and now this is how you pray. First, the, the six-minute prayer. Most of you are familiar with it. It's on the rack if you need it. And it's just, you know, praying, uh, ble- uh, praying um, a thanksgiving, praying repentance, and praying, praying a blessing. So, uh, you know, he, I'm thinking, and we're all listening, like, and Phyllis and I, like, we're, like, smiling at each other. Then he goes, okay, so everybody stand up and face each other. We're going to do this. I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? Like, do it now? Like, with each other? You know, like, oh, and he goes, and then when you do it, look at each other's eyes and pray it. I'm like, I'm out of here. I can't do this. We are in ministry, speaking on marriage, uh, married, and everything else. And it was like a, a gear shift. 
So man, we had a lot to talk about that rest of that day. We didn't have to worry about subject matter. But the key was, when God starts doing something in your relationship, it not only shifts you, but it brings stuff up that's been hidden for a long time. It brings up fears, disappointments, things from the past, things from the future. So be ready. See, wisdom allows something bigger to unfold. And that's why, why James says it's so important. If you lack wisdom, ask, and God will give it generously. Without finding fault, it'll be given. This isn't about God saying, see, see, see. He says, okay, let, let me give you the big picture that you haven't seen. Because when, when, when things like that happen, um, when you ask God to reveal things, this is, says uh, you have to ask God to reveal what is going on, not doing on, going on. It, what's going on in your spouse, your boss, your kids, your family? Let him reveal the places that need healing and hope. It may be forgiveness. It may be faith to stop out, step out in healing of hurts or vision. Trust that God is a way ahead of you, and he knows what has to change in you as well as the other person. Wisdom reveals what is causing the jam up and how to take the next step. That's important. What is it? See, when we don't ask for wisdom, we just try to figure it out. Well, that's the way she was brought up. That's the way he was. Oh, that's, you know, that's just, I have to just do that. That's our kids. Oh, that's the school. That's a... But when we pray for wisdom, we say, God, show me something bigger here. What is it? What is it? Now, you may be in the way. I certainly have been in the way. You may be in the way, and, and wisdom tells you stepping back and being able to understand what God wants to do. So all of a sudden, you know, instead of the fight that's going on, you know, when, uh, again, we were first married, it was a rough first year, you know, seminary. Uh, we didn't have any money, but that was standard. It wasn't even like we had a little money. We had no money. That was the way it worked. So you got the check. It went in and went out, went in and went out, went in and went out. We ate. When our, my folks would come and visit, they'd bring a whole, this huge bag of, of mostly meat and everything else. And all we would pray is, please have them take us out to dinner so we don't have to use any of this food on them, you know. So that was. <laughs> but wisdom reveals. See, when I say, God, bring wisdom, bring direction into this relationship, then we wait. And what he starts doing is moving things around, get, getting you out of the way and allowing him to bring understanding. There have been times in our relationship where, you know, we're, it's not we're, we're not arguing. We're just like, whatever, you know, Christmas is coming or the holidays are coming or whatever it is. And, and everybody's life gets crazy. And I remember there was one year that I was particularly, like, overwhelmed by it. And I said to Phyllis, you know, and we had, you know, the typical calendar that was filled with as many things as possible. If there's a day, you got something happening on it. And I, I was sitting in, in the den or whatever I was, and, and Phyllis goes, and, and we, weren't, we weren't in agreement. We weren't arguing. We was like, no, but we have to do that. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't know how I can do that. Maybe we can move it over there. No, we can't. And it just was like this. You know, every day it was like, it was almost dreading. Like, And then one of us finally said those fatal words, I can't wait for Christmas to be over. And that was like, I can't believe we just said that. But we, and we were both like, yeah. Wait a minute. And that's when I went into another part of the room. I just said, God, what is going on? And we sat down and we began to talk back and forth. And we found out that what we really wanted is just time together. And we had time together here and time together here and time together with 27 people in the house. That was not time together. And out of that, we started creating what we, what we now call our Christmas date. And it's our date that, you know, it's very random. It's, it's like a little ping pong ball wheel, but we know on that day, nothing is going to happen except us going out. And maybe we'll get dinner, maybe we won't, maybe we'll go someplace and see the trees, whatever it is, we are, you know, again, at our season in life, many of you, I don't know if you remember doing this, but as kids, we always, and we took our kids, you got hot chocolate, got in the car, and you drove around and saw the lights of all the houses with the lights on. Now, here we are, married 42 years, we get in the car with hot chocolate, and we go and drive through the neighborhood and, and, and just look at the hot lights. Pretty simple, very inexpensive, but very simple. You see, so, but that came out of where it could have just been like, that's it, forget it, we're not doing this anymore. You know, I can't wait for Christmas to be over. Think of the decorations down, New Year's Day, you know, that it could escalate. But when we say, God, give me wisdom, we have to just stop and say, okay, God, what is going on? What do you want us to know? 
Now, it may not be, this isn't something to say, oh, we're going to do that now. We needed that time. Not, not a whole deep retro introspection and, a, and not a huge, we need to go out to this expensive dinner and go into the city and stay over. No, we just needed time. We're very, we're very um, quality time oriented. That's our, our, our uh, gifts, yeah, our love language. So in the middle of this, sometimes standing firm on his promises when it's hard, that we must believe. Uh, belief comes from the conviction, you know, that he is an answer. That's, see, that's what it's all about. It's not belief that it's going to change because, you know, if it snows tomorrow or, or, or if I get a better job. No, but he has an answer in our relationship. He has an answer. He has an answer. It's like we have to say, okay, God, you have an answer here. The wisdom of heaven is going to flow into my heart, flow into my line, because I don't want to be double-minded. I don't want to be like, yeah, okay, God can do it. He's not doing it fast enough. I'll do it myself. And see, that's where, these, where relationships start spinning out of control. Because part of us, is, as a Christian, is believing it's going to change. And the other part of us is like, not fast enough. I've got to do it myself. And we're not waiting for God to birth something new in that relationship, something that is different than anything, um, anything that we could possibly imagine. And that's why he says we, we become frustrated when we want to please the Lord and ourselves. We want to do what God wants, but we want what we want. And that's what, what uh, James says. You know, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. When was the last time in a relationship, in your relationship, did you feel like unstable? That, that sort of feeling that you don't really know how to express, like, what is going on? What is going on? Well, it's the season we're in. That's usually the end. What's the season? No, but what, I don't know. What are we doing? What are we, what are we doing? What are we going? What's happening? You know, and then you just, like, the doorbell rings and the phone goes off and you just Go. But that's what James is talking about. When we don't have the wisdom of heaven, when we're not saying, God, what is the bigger thing that you're doing in our life? And we want to be in that. We want to be part of that. When we don't do that anymore, we stop asking those questions and we stop waiting for God to do this revelation of our heart. You see, yeah, we go on that date, but it's not, it's not this planned like we're going to go here, the street. You know, we just kind of, our daughter, Jacqueline, she takes, well, both our kids, I think, take after us, but she definitely takes after me. She is the planner, and Bradley is too. So we'll say, yeah, hey, no, we can't. Thursday night, we're going out on our Christmas date. Okay, well, here are the places that I've researched. This is a place here. There's a really great house in this. So she would have us going like this all over Long Island. We just get in the car and drive through the neighborhood. That was the aim, not like put on the GPS. Okay, put on that street number. We did that once. I said, I don't, I don't think this is what we're about. I think it's about just being together, holding hands while you're driving, having the Christmas music on and talking about Christmas and, and the stuff. That, that, that's what that was all about. And I love my daughter, believe me. She is, both our kids are me on the next level. It's really scary. When they come into town, we just step back and they just plan our lives. So this last plan left the dog with us, which I'm not sure that plan is the one I was in on, let me tell you right now. He looks at me, I look at him, I said, you know, his name is Woofy. Woofy, you're going back to Arizona soon. Just make it through this time with us here. Okay, so the next part of this then is in terms of our relationship, what is our conviction? James 1, 9 through 12 says this. This is on the flip side of your notes. The notes will always be in the back there. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he, will because he will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its bloom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even when he, does, he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So, so here, here's, here's some just you know, four words to help us through this. What is your attitude in the relationship you're in right now? What's your attitude towards it? Well, what does that mean? When someone says, asks you something about it, is it like, well, you know, we're just in that season right now. Or is it, you know, this is just the greatest place I can be in my life right now? Is it the one that just says, you know, God's just doing great stuff, or we're really, 
we just see God doing incredible things. What, whatever it may be, the humility, humility in a relationship sets the bar for that growing together. My attitude is one of being humble. Now, hum, humility means a place that we're not setting boundaries around ourselves. We're not, you know, like, you better do this. You know, better do it my way, this way. It just, I, I come into this relationship humble. Come into this relationship to say, God, what would you have me do in this relationship? It can be in work. It can be with just friends. But especially in a marriage, humility in a relationship sets the bar to grow together. Because I'm not going to be able to grow together if, we're not going to be able to grow together if I'm the only one determining how we're going to grow. You get that? If I've decided this is the way we're going to grow, and Phyllis has nothing to say about it, then we're not really going to grow together. If her attitude is one of whatever you say, Ted, then we'll just grow my way. And that's a little scary. It sounds like a good idea, and believe me, there are seasons in my life where I thought it was an excellent idea. But as I've uh, grown up, I've realized that that, that, that attitude, that humility is a place that now we can both invest into that place if we both come humbly. And there are seasons, there are situations where you go, you know what, I don't even know. Really, when it comes to, when it came to raising the children, I mean, I, I love our kids and, and, and they were part of our life, but I had to be very humble and say, you know what, I really don't know. I really don't know. And, and I didn't go, the, well, I'm the head of the house here and this is what we're going to do. No, I was like, I don't know. Phyllis is a sensitivity. She did... Uh, private uh, daycare, uh, child care work for years. She, she gets it. So I just show up and I say, help me. You know? She'll say, you know, you should spend, when the kids were little, she goes, you know, you, sh you should spend some more time with Bradley. And I'm like, I have no idea what that means. I did not grow up in a house where my father spent time with me, so I have no resource. And I could say, okay, well, I'm gonna just, well you know, he's fine. You know, he's, he's good. He's good. I didn't. I said, hon, I don't even know what to do. But I don't even know what to do. And then she would give me suggestions. I had no problem with that because I, I had an empty book. I, you, know, I, you know, I would do something for 10 minutes. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. And, and, and she, it wasn't like, you know, again, it wasn't like we had finances to let's go fly to Florida and go to Disney World together. No, it's just I had to learn. There are places in humility in our relationships that's really important. Hun, I don't know what the answer is. Or after that time out in Arizona, I remember Phil, Phyllis and I were talking. It was a place that we were not in conflict, but we were, weren't happy about our prayer life together. And I remember we sat there, and then here I am, you know, pastoring a church, seminary education, da 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 da. And I said, I really don't know how we should pray together. I don't know. What do you need? What do you think? That was like a changing point in our relationship. I could have said, well, okay, it's my responsibility to do this now. We'll just take this card out and do it every day. Check, 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 check. It opened this huge door. Neither of us grew at homes where our parents prayed together. We were fortunate if maybe there was prayer at the dinner table. So here we are. Now we're going to pray together. Like, that's just going to fall out of the ceiling. No, we had to come to that place and say, okay, God, I don't want that pride to be in the way. I want that place where I can move closer to you. And then attention. When we're only focused on ourselves, we don't even see the failing of our relationship. Boy, I'll tell you, and men, sorry, I'm going to have to call you out on this one. So many times women are sending up flares, you know. Things aren't good here. Things aren't good. And they're putting banners up. They're buying billboards. And when finally she goes, you know, that's it. I'm done. Then the husband comes and goes, yeah, I don't understand. You know, my wife, she just, she wants a divorce. What? I said, didn't she have, I don't. I don't know, it just came out of nowhere. And she's sitting there ready to blast through the roof, you know, because she's been saying it over and over again. We need to pay attention. And I'm telling you, I, I did a, I was, spoke at a men's conference in uh, Brooklyn. That's a whole other world, Brooklyn. And uh, I did the same thing. I said, you know, here is the thing. If we could spend as much, if you, you know, mine, I guess we all have, but they come up and they tell you how much time you've been on your device. Sometimes it's like, no, this must be somebody else's phone. Couldn't be me, but it is. If we took all that time, if we took half that time and focus it with the same focus we have on this in our relationships, a lot of things would change. A lot of things would change. We're getting in the place where, uh, nothing in it, don't worry. 
um, we're getting into the place where we have given permission to each other to say, you really need to put your phone away. And you know the scary part is sometimes I'm on it and I don't even know it. Like, that's weird. Ted, you need to put your phone down. Oh, like I'm on it. It's like I'm not on drugs, you know. I'm on it, you know. So again, there are times that we have to, because both of us, both myself, will, um, it's a relationship. If we're together, we're in relationship in a, in a physical way. And if somebody, and, and, and if one person is somewhere else, uh, one of the pa- uh, ch- youth pastors years ago said when everybody started with the texting and everything else, he said, yeah, that's p- when people pick up their phone and they start doing that, they're leaving their body, but they're leaving. And that sticks with me. We were watching, I don't know if you ever, have you seen, uh, uh, we were, somebody told us about this uh, movie, I think uh, it's called The Crown, The Crown. So we thought, well, this would be a great time just to get a bigger picture. I mean, it's, it's, it's I guess, a docudrama. So it's very interesting. So we said, yeah, let's do that. You know, we put the lights and we have the TV and everything else. And I look over and Phyllis is on her iPad. And I said, oh, oh, um, Phil, you're, you're on your iPad. We're supposed to be watching this film together. She goes, that's okay. I'm just ordering stuff. So I had the controls. So I, sh- I, I said, okay, we'll just shut this off until you're um, done ordering stuff. There's other ways to do that. That probably wasn't the best way to do it. But, um, but you know what? She sa- has said the same thing to me. So, hey, is when you're done, then we can start. Are we? Oh, I didn't even realize, realize I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? If we, we need, sometimes we need help to pay attention to what matters. We need help. And it's okay. We need to, we literally said, I give you the words. I give you permission to tell me to put my phone down or device down when it when it's in the way of what's going on and you know you don't always go oh thank you it's like okay and then admission we uh, we choose to see the challenge through a marriage parenting challenging relationship in other words the perseverance is connected to what god has called the relationship to be we need to know that not what you want it to be, what he has a vision for it to be. That's, you know, in verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he'll receive the crown of life. In other words, there is a place where we have to be able to say, okay, I, I need to have, be part of this. I need to have an admission that this is, this is what I want. This is what God wants for us. You know, it's, it's, it's not just not to get divorced. That's, of course, God doesn't want divorce. But it's like, okay, what is it? Maybe you have to be in a class like this or, or uh, you know, the, the, the Bible studies the women are having on Monday, the men are men's Monday, whatever. Some places say, you know, I need to stir up some stuff here. You know, just showing up, as Pastor Stephen said, an hour and a half on a Sunday, it's good and we should be there. But God, what is the bigger thing you have? And then finally at the end, the advantage, the crown of life. You know, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. You know, overcoming births in us, an understanding of, of anything, a birth and a life. Now we take a fresh breath, um, and we're no longer tied to the world's values and purposes. Yesterday, um, the church that I spoke at was in, uh, in Brooklyn, um, and it, it, parking the car in Brooklyn was the hardest part of the entire day. <laughs> Speaking, sharing, but the car, parking in Brooklyn, I, it it was insane. And so the church, the actual church, was the church that birthed this church. It used to be called Salem Gospel Tabernacle. They birthed a church in New Hyde Park here, New City, and in Staten Island. And, um, uh, and, then it, and, and, and of course, here. And then, and then it changed to uh, Sunset Park Community Church. But it used to be a temple. And, uh, and it has still all, a lot of that sort of, uh, because it's got, it's funny with Pastor Stephen, all stained, these beautiful stained glass windows and everything else. And so as, um, as I'm standing, and, and it's dark, it was just very dark, and I remember stepping outside, and, and it's an old building, they have, you know, no money, so it's an old building that's old. So when you walk in, you get that old smell, the, this, i you know exactly what it is when you walk in, like in a basement, an old basement. You're just walking up, yep, I got that. That the whole church feels smells like that. Doesn't matter. And I remember at one point, I I just needed air. 
just needed air. The air conditioning was on, I just needed air. And I stepped outside, it was bright, and, and I just was like those few minutes with just some fresh air before I went back in. That's what God wants for us in our relationships. Fresh air. To be able to say, okay, we're ready to go ahead. To get out of the old musty stuff that's just hanging around. I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for God, to, for, God for you to do something. Do I know what it is? I don't, but I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm not just planning, 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 planning. I'm a planner. I could plan myself into oblivion, you know. But it's not. It's just saying, okay, God, I'm ready. And there are times where, you know, where maybe it's a Sunday afternoon and we, we are not, uh, it's not like a legalism thing. We just don't shop on Sundays. If there's milk, I have to get the milk. There's a, but we're not like going to Costco. Now, maybe some of you do. Lord bless you. I'm glad. But we just feel like one day of the week we've got to preserve somehow, you know, and not just go off to our normal routines. And there's sometimes, the neatest part about it is, is sometimes we will just, Phyllis will say, hey, why don't we just go for a walk? And it's like, <gasps> fresh air. That's just, not just only from the walk, but just, yeah, let's just do that. Or, or uh, one, one, uh, one week we had, uh, we had bought apples, and she said, hey, let's make an apple pie together. Wow, this is, the, the, the heavens didn't shake, but we just enjoyed that time. You see what I'm saying? It's those simple things when he says, the crown of life. The neat thing is the crown that is life. God wants our relationships to be filled with life. Because you know what? We had my mom with us, and we still do. She's 92. She was sitting at the table in our kitchen, and I had come home. And we, I don't know what, we just have always shared kitchen. You know, I mean, uh, the less I share cooking, the happy everybody is. But, you know, I'm a good cleaner upper and stuff like that and things. And we were just joking with one another, I forgot, because we love our we love our home, and sometimes two people in the same spot cooking creates a lot of different things, you know. And so we were joking and laughing. We turned around, we sat down, and she was like, can I say something? I thought, oh, sometimes you never know what my mother's going to say, you know. It's like, okay, here we go. She said, you really love each other, don't you? And, and that's not something, we don't put little signs up everywhere, you know. I said, oh, yeah. She goes, because, and she made a reference to somebody she knows. She said, I never see them joking and laughing like the two of you. She goes, wow. And that was it. And then we had dinner and off we went. But, you know, people see your relationship. And even if it's gone through some tough times, they see the restoration. They see something's changed. They come to you and say, so how she's doing? Oh, you know, we, I just love her more than ever before. What? Wait, what? That's not what you told me a month ago. So when we look at James and we're understanding, you know, it's a building of all these principles and we're funneling them into our marriage. We're funneling them into our relationships with other people. We're funneling them into our times with our kids, whatever it may be. We're funneling them into our businesses. So if we lack wisdom, God will give understanding of that. If we come to the place where we're not really sure what God wants to do, then we stop and we say, all right, Lord, Bring my wisdom. Show me what has to do. And, and let me know the, the bigness of life that you have for us in our relationships. Amen? All right. So we're going to keep going on this. And we're going to believe God for good stuff. Lord, let these truths be in our heart. Let the truths that you're pouring into us all through this time here today. And may we be transformed. May every relationship, the marriage relationships, the datings, the relationships we have with friends, family, and our business, may they be changed because of the wisdom from above that you're pouring into us, that you'll receive the honor and the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.